Hi everyone, um, this is my second weekly vlog um, and so last week I wound up taking pretty much all of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off of hands, off of sewing entirely, but in, especially hand sewing um, to try to protect my wrists. And so this week what I'm trying to do is um, only hand sew for an hour at a time and then put at least another hour of something else in between. Uh, so that I can hopefully continue to strengthen my wrist. Um, and the weekend off definitely did me well because yesterday I got boning channels sewn in one half of my bodice. So um, they still have to have the boning inserted, which is why the tops are loose. But I have boning channels sewed on half. This took me two hours, um, one hour for the small ones and one hour for the bigger one. So um, I think I can get the other one done today. Um, in the meantime, I have started another just like non-hand sewing project so that I can be throwing it in between things and I'm making another Sienna Makers jacket from Closet Case. Um, I tested this pattern and I made the short version so now I want to make one of the long versions and I have um, this lavender chambray that I'm using to make it. So I think it'll be a really cute spring jacket. Um, I'm very excited because a, I, when I tested it, I had actually printed off the longer version as well as the shorter version um, on to the sturdy paper that I use when I'm, um, when I print things off that are PDFs. And they send me the final version in tissue, but uh, I don't have the PDF of that. So usually if I want to make another one, I have to trace off the tissue and I hate tracing off tissue. But since I had the original printed, um, and I knew that they did make changes. I was able to just lay the tissue paper on top of um, the PDF print that I had and just trace off just the areas that changed. And it helped me so much. I didn't have to transfer like any of the notches and other markings. And so I was really, really pleased with that because it went very fast. And then I only had two yards of the chambray. And technically, I, uh, according to the chart, I needed 2.75 yards, but I was able to squeeze it all into two yards. Um, so I am also very pleased with that. So I have been working on that yesterday. I have the body all made up with all the pockets on, starting to work on the collar now. Um, it's going maybe a little too fast. <laughs> I'm going to need to start something else soon. Um, but I'm just doing that in between working on this. It's kind of hard to s switch off so abruptly like that. I really do like to sit and work on something. So I think that's why I've gone so far on the Sienna is that I'm like working on it. And I don't want to stop working on it. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going. So that is what I have been working on so far this week. Um, fingers crossed that the, the wrists stay good. Um, the other thing that I have been working on is finishing up um, this hand sewing sampler. I've had an idea in my mind for a while about a sampler of all the different hand sewing stitches you use for garment making. So um, I'm gonna put out another video about this and um, all the stitches that are in it and things like that uh, with some more information. So keep an eye out for that one as well. So I am going to, I think, get started this morning on working on the second half of the bodice and um, set a timer for an hour and then go back to the, the collar on the Sienna and kind of switch off today and see how far I get. So I'm working on sewing down the second half of um, my very last bone casing that I have to sew. And so I thought that I would film it a little bit, although you probably just mostly see my fingers because I'm, you know, smoothing down the second half. Um, the bone casings are intended to be put on with fullness. I'm using this book, Authentic Victorian Dressmaking Techniques, for a lot of um, couture techniques that I'm using because it is said that Christian Dior went and studied um, Victorian dressmaking techniques when he brought about the modern um, method of couture. Not to mention that couture had its roots in um, Worth, which was during this Victorian time period. But um, the bone casing is sewn on fully so that... Um, I've said my highlighting. Uh, it takes stress off the garment and puts stress only on the bones. 
So that's what I am working on. It's all also only sewn to the seam allowance, um, which makes it a little tricky. Uh, these ones aren't sewn to the seam allowance because the seam allowance is bound um, and stitched down. So the this one edge is sewn to the binding, and then this edge is sewn just to the underlining. Um, but these ones are sewn straight to the seam allowance, which is tricky because the seam allowance is, of course, quite heavily clipped and curved. Um, the instructions in the book in indicate that you're to sew it on with running stitches, but I find it easier to control the application of fullness, um, the, the disbursement of the fullness when I'm using whip stitches. So that's what I'm doing. Also, these casings are 5 eighths of an inch wide, which is um, much wider than my bones, so I'm not too worried about making enough room for them. And just going on down. See, I've left them open at the top so I can put the bones in, and then I'll push the bones in really hard, and it will, um, it's called springing the bones, and then I'll fold this over the edge of the bone and stitch it down once I get the bones inserted. And it's just, it's a little loop because I just want to double the thickness um, at the top and bottom just for some extra security um, to prevent the bone from popping out or anything. So, just, ow. The thing that's almost hurting my fingers more, I think, when I'm hand sewing, my hands more, is that especially this this underlining material is very tough to pull the the needle through so it's this act of pulling the needle that um i think puts more wear and tear on my hands i had a lot of trouble on this half this side seems to be going better um I had a lot of trouble getting my needle through the fabric so i was making really good progress on my sienna makers jacket have the collar all sewn on nicely and the facings top stitched down. And now I had intended to lengthen the sleeves by an inch. And when I cut them out, I forgot to make the pattern alteration. Um, but the, the hem allowance is an inch and a quarter. So I hemmed it at a quarter inch with some bias tape. And so that way I lengthened them by an inch. So that's good. And I just sewed the sleeves in. And the sleeves are sewn in inside out. That's the curse of a cleanly finished garment. <laughs> it's hard to tell sometimes what's the inside and what's the outside because I can't see any seam allowance. Um, but this is the right side. It has a pocket. Although, see, this side has a pocket on the, on the inside. But that's the outside of the jacket. This is the inside where the, the facing is top stitched down. So... My sleeves are on inside out. Thank goodness I haven't finished them yet. I was just pressing them when I realized, hey, that's not right. So, um, fortunately I'll have to rip those off and sew them back on the right way around. But I am almost done with a jacket. As soon as I get that sleeve on correctly and then hem it, I will be good to go. Um, it went super fast, which is almost a little disappointing because I wanted it to take longer, um, but that's all right. I have some other plans for what I might do in the meantime, but yeah, I've got to pick this seam out on both sleeves. I thought it was going so well. Great progress has been made. I am finished with my Sienna Makers jacket. Um, I also finished putting in the boning and the boning channels into my bodice. So now I'm ready to try some draping out on this. Um, I finished this yesterday while I was having a chat with Rebecca, who is my best friend and a maid of honor. And um, my bachelorette party was supposed to be next weekend. Um, we were going to go to Harry Potter World. And so I've been making um, shirts with my Cricut for that. And I hadn't finished a second shirt. And I decided 
you know, it would be um, a great thing to just go ahead and finish those shirts and send them out to everyone. So now I also have a project to work on when I'm not doing hand sewing, which will be finishing up my bachelorette party shirts. Um, some of them are tank tops and they're like really long. And so I wanted to crop uh, some of them. And, and some people said that they also wanted theirs cropped. So I have matching thread and I'm gonna use my cover stitch to hem them. I'm also going to make some scrunchies because while I'm sending out packages to people, might as well include some scrunchies. I've had some requests from people. I've been making um, scrunchies with the silk velvet scraps that I bought and um, they make fantastic scrunchies. So um, I will be sewing some scrunchies as well. Um, I'm just really excited to have like another project that I can work on in my free time that feels very productive because I have, um, you know, a reason to do it other than just make this random thing and um, is also very easy to do so I don't have to think too much about it. So I will be working on that. I also yesterday got some fabric mail. Um, as part of the Mood Sewing Network, I have access to their VIP program, um, which is kind of like, it's you, you pay a, a yearly fee and you um, get an extra discount on sale fabrics, you get early access to some uh, to their new fabrics and you also get free shipping. So um, it was really easy for me to, I just needed some stretch cotton sateen and I got it really fast with free shipping for a huge discount because it was already on sale. Uh, I'm gonna be using this to make a mock-up of some jeans that I want, um, have wanted to make and I have the pattern but I just didn't have the mock-up fabric. So now I have some and so I will also probably, maybe not today, start working on that. Depends on if I get frustrated with my cover stitch or not. Um, if I wind up frustrated with the cover stitch, then I will probably move on to working on this. Um, and we're gonna see where where the bodice goes. I've got some errands to run today. Got to go to the um, to the grocery store and also to some breweries um, to get some growlers filled up. So I will be doing that as well and. Um, feeling in a really good place today with all the projects now that I have like some direction on some things and stuff like that so yeah my tripod is broken so things might be shaky cam for a while but I um have my tool that I'm going to be draping with laid out um on my cutting mat so that I can cut it into four panels so that I can be draping it onto the front and back of my mannequin and trying to kind of lay it over things and and see what happens so yeah excited about that I'm just cutting it with my rotary cutter which is by far the easiest way to cut shifty tool and net like this I have no idea what I'm doing um my it's not fitting well on the mannequin Something to do with the stomach area, the waistline is like riding up and, and pouching on the mannequin in a way that it doesn't do on me, probably because I'm squishy and the mannequin's not. It also totally doesn't close on the mannequin, and but it feels like it's not because the waist isn't big enough, it's because the shoulders are like too long um, and again, squishy. Um, so I have been playing with draping on myself using my washer pins and I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm really liking it um what this is doing so I even kind of like how it's like coming over the neckline when I use this straight edge although I could you know see what it, it looked like tucked in as well um but I kind of like the the layered effect I think it's really pretty reminds me of my first choice dress um which is why I wanted to do this uh, draping, my first choice ready to wear dress, um, which was from Waters. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think I'm going to maybe like take it off and leave it and work on the skirt for a bit and leave it pinned so that I, I, I can see what I wanted to do and um, work on the skirt and, and then just come back to it and say, yeah, am I still liking where this is going? Um, problem with draping on myself though, the back. I don't, I can't do anything back there. Um, 
I don't know how that's going to happen. Might have to wait until quarantines are over and I can see Rebecca or Addie and say, please do this on me. Um, but yeah, this is looking really pretty. This is actually the purple over the pink. Um, I wasn't, I originally wanted the purple under, uh, the pink on top of the purple. Um, there's a purple layer of tulle and a pink layer of tulle. And the idea was to make it look more bridal, um, but the pink just makes such more shocking pleats than the purple does. The purple pleats are very barely noticeable. So I kind of like having the pink under there, but then putting the purple back on top to, to bring it back to the original tone of the dress. Um, I'll see how it works in the skirt too. The purple tulle is a lot stiffer. It's like, it, it is a soft tulle, um, but the pink is a net and you can even see the drape. The pink is um, so much softer and gentler um, on my skin. So maybe it's good having it be on the inside. The skirt though, I was thinking of my hands being on top. I just don't know. I don't know. Um, I might just leave this on for a while <laughs> and see what I think about it. I, I'm working on finishing the skirt of my getting ready robe and um, to do that I'm, I'm finishing the seam allowances. Uh, the, the underlining has been cut short and then um, I have already previously pressed the fashion fabric around um, the underlining and I am whip stitching that folded edge down to the underlining only, which is a difficult task because the skirt is very large. Uh, these seams are very long and I need to um, be able to feel what I'm doing so I can feel the needle exit the fabric and then I can feel the needle um, myself drop the fashion fabric off the needle so that I'm only catching the underlining when I'm stitching so that you can't see any of these stitches from the outside. Um, but that's pretty hard. See, I have a lot of fabric in my hand. Um, it can be very stressful on the non-sewing hand to do this. Um, so one thing that I do to help me with that is I have a clamp which is holding one end of my work to the table. Sometimes you um, want to put the clamp behind where you're sewing, sometimes in front of. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, but that is helping me to put tension on the fabric without like trying to hold everything in my non-sewing hand. I can just um, hold it back and put tension by pulling away from the clamp. Um, and so that is one thing I'm working on. I don't have any more hand sewing to do on the bodice until I am finished with all the draping. And um, I just want to sit and kind of think about the draping for a while. I don't want to um, move too fast on it. I, I want to go slow and make sure I like um, what, it, what it's looking like and what I'm doing. So um, I'm not going to worry about going full speed ahead on that. I'm just going to um, focus on some other things, one of which being finishing um, this robe, since there's no more hand uh, machine sewing left on it, only hand sewing. And um, I might get a chance to get started on the skirt before I finish the bodice. Um, have to sew together all the layers of the skirt of the wedding dress and those will be done mostly on the machine. Um, so, but it's good that I'm getting a chance to work on this. Um, so this is my hand sewing for now, which I'm trying still to do in limited quantities and rotate in other projects. I worked on another project this morning. I didn't do any hand stitching this morning. I worked on my bachelorette party shirts, actually. So, I um, worked on cropping some of them. Not everyone wanted a cropped shirt, but um, those that did want them, I used my cover stitch machine to do a really nice professional looking hem on the bottom of them. And then I um, heat pressed. I had previously cut 
these vinyl out on my Cricut and um, I heat pressed them all today uh, just with my iron. I don't actually have a heat press, but so this one is mine, obviously. Um, so I've been working on that and I've been working on making um, some scrunchies as well um, for some non-machine sewing. I have velvet that I like to use to make scrunchies. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together little uh, gift packages for um, some of my friends to send to them. And so the scrunchies are part of that. Um, so that is everything that I'm working on today. I'll hand sew this um, for just a few more minutes, probably till I get to the end of this seam um, because I do want to make sure to give my sewing hand a break. And then I will go work on some scrunchies for a bit and then um, come back to this after I've done that for a bit. And just rotate through that until it's time for me to cook dinner. So, yeah. So in between um, stitching up the robe, which is really boring to be finishing those seams, um, I've been working on making a grain line scout tee. Um, I was really inspired by this blouse that I saw on Pinterest that was like a cute little woven t-shirt with pin tucks and I had wanted to make a blouse for a while out of some handkerchief weight linen that I have um, a lot of because I use it for chemise and um, historical costumes so I um, opened up my pattern folder for the scout tee and found that I did not make I didn't alter the original pattern which I was Really proud of myself for because a lot of times I'll just cut right into it. Um, I've used it once before and I liked the fit a lot um, and I used it and made a top um, out of some of the leftover fabric from my Girlandio gown um, and I had made some alterations. I narrowed it and I put a, a bust start in so I had both the original pattern and also one that I had made alterations to fit me the way I really liked it. Um, the only thing that I changed was the neckline. So I kind of put them together um, to return to the original neckline but with the new fit changes. And I added pin tucks in this time. Um, two, two pin tucks at the top and two pin tucks at the bottom. So I altered that pattern. I also added um, an extra quarter inch of seam allowance to the sleeve seam because the original sleeve seam is only a quarter inch. And with this lightweight linen, um, I was worried that was going to be just not um, not enough of a seam allowance because it's a fairly loose weave. So I added an extra one so that I could flat fill the seam. And um, I have the problem that when I'm working on something, I just don't want to change. So I've got nearly this whole top done today, but I only sewed one seam, um, finished one seam on the, on the robe. Um, so here is that top, and I think that it's turned out really cute, except for I made the pin tucks just a little too high in the front because they run into the neckline binding. Um, so there that is. I just need to flat fell the shoulder seam and hem it. I did make one mistake in that I, um, because of the, the bust dart I added in, the front becomes shorter. And when I was um, making up my pin tuck pattern, because the pin tucks make the pattern longer, I checked the length based on the original pattern and not the piece that had um, the shorter back piece to match with the front. So my back piece is longer, so I just need to um, lay it out and trim it down and then um, I'll be able to hem the bottom and flat fell the shoulder seams and that'll be all done. Um, but this is turning out exactly how I wanted it to be, so very excited about that. Um, but I haven't, I just haven't gotten a lot done recently. Um, haven't been feeling up to sewing, especially when I just have the, the boring part of finishing the seams to do. Um, it's not that interesting. So I need to find, find some better stuff to watch on Netflix so that I can get that going and get that done with. But um, yeah, I am very happy with how this has gone um, so far. But like I said, I, I worked, I would work on the hour on doing the other thing and then I'd come back to this and then I just work way too long on this because I don't want to stop doing it uh, when I'm in the middle of doing. But yep, yeah, that's just something I've been working on. 
I have still been trucking along on um, finishing the insides of this robe and it is definitely taking me longer than I had thought or hoped or I had more left to do than I thought. I do have all of the skirt seams finished now. Um, it took me about an hour to do each one like on each side so it's two hours per seam so it's like six hours total but I really sprinted it today. I got three of them done which was good. I, I did better today at uh, managing my breaks between hand sew, do something else, come back to hand sewing. But I had some non-sewing stuff to do today. I had some like computer work I needed to get done. So um, maybe that's what helped. I was doing things I didn't want to be doing. Uh, now I'm working on finishing the waistline seam. I did mess up twice. And when I was trimming the layers, because this top layer is like folded around all the other ones, but I accidentally cut it twice. And that's because I was trying to not use regular scissors instead of my duckbill scissors. And this is what duckbill scissors are for. So you don't accidentally cut when you're trying to cut through multiple layers. So after I cut it twice, I switched to my duckbill scissors and didn't make any more mistakes. But I'm just going to stitch a little more densely around that area um, to stop the fabric from fraying. I'm really not too worried about it um, otherwise. So I have to finish the waist seam, which I've started stitching, but I ran out of thread. Um, so that was a good stopping point for me to go get ready for dinner. Um, I have to finish, this is like the front and back edge. Um, it'll get turned under like that. I'll probably trim off. Um, the underlining there and just wrap that around the underlining and then stitch that down and then once that's all done I will be able to hem it um, which will be quite a bit of work as well um, so I've got all that to look forward to luckily I did already based on my hemline so I have something to make it easy to press up um, easy to turn on I finished my pin tucked scout tee so that is all done. Oh, I have one more thing to do, which is do the top stitching on the other um, tie. You can see the top stitching, hopefully. I did it in purple, because I thought that'd be kind of fun. The fabric is green and purple, um, which are some of my wedding colors. So um, I thought that was cute, but I have to do the other tie now. Um, one side is easier than the other, I found. The side with the seam went really slow because of all the layers of fabric. The side without the seam went a lot quicker. Um, so, still a lot left to do on this. Um, but just gotta keep chucking along. I'm considering now bringing down the layers of my wedding dress skirt, which I have previously cut out, um, so that I can at least seam them up on the machine. Um, there will be one where the seam has to be hand finished like this, the base layer um, doesn't really have to be, but that's what I choose to do. And then one layer will be French seamed on the machine, and then the rest of the layers won't have the seams finished because um, they're good, they're net fabrics. They don't they don't need finished seams. Um, other than that, I am thinking about my next project, um, which will be another version of the McCall's top um, that I made recently. I made view C recently, and I think I'm going to make um, the long sleeve view next, but without the collar. And I also think that I'm going to scoop out the neckline to um, not have it be a jewel neck. The jewel neck's cute, but I don't love it, love it. So um, I was trying to, to not make a muslin, but I'm feeling now like I wanna make a muslin just so that I can make sure there's enough fabric for gathers once I scoop it down and also to make sure the sleeve length is the right length because of how they're bloused at the bottom. I wanna make sure my sleeves are long enough on me to do that blousing because I have long arms and usually wind up adding length to sleeves. Um, I have a black silk cotton wall um, that I'm gonna use for that. So that'll probably be my next project. I did today trace off the, the long sleeve piece of the pattern. Um, since I didn't have the long sleeve piece traced. Um, yeah, so that is it for the week. I think I'm going to edit this vlog now and see you guys next time.